Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the University of Texas at Austin. I'm Bill Powers, the president of UT, and we're gathered here on a truly historic day in the life of two great institutions. Two organizations anchored in Austin, but that have global impact. Today, I'm thrilled and honored to make not just one, but two interrelated announcements. The first is that the Liz Strong Foundation has pledged $50 million to the University of Texas at Austin for the creation of the Liz Strong Cancer Institutes at the Dell Medical School. Thank you. The Liz Strong Foundation is a remarkable organization, one made powerful first and foremost by the cancer survivors it serves and those who love them, and also by the tireless work of its board and of its staff. In a moment, we'll hear from two of its leaders. But now I want to say a very, very heartfelt thanks to the founding chair of the board, Jeff Garvey, and to the president and CEO, Doug Ullman. Jeff and Doug, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. I also, also with us today is Senator Kirk Watson, who's been so instrumental in the formation of the Dell Medical School and also in the Live Strong Cancer Institutes at the Dell Medical School. Senator, your story as a cancer survivor inspires us, and your boundless energy in helping others is an example to us all. What would Austin be like without Senator Kirk Watson? I also want to give my thanks and congratulations to Clay Johnston, the dean of the Dell Medical School, whom we'll hear from in a moment, and to Greg Fenves, our provost, who's been at the center of all of these developments. And I want to thank the leaders of the UT system, the Chancellor Sigaroa, Chairman Paul Foster, and the Board of Regents for their support of the Dell Medical School. And of course, I want to thank Michael and Susan Dell. And to the Michael and Susan Dell Foundation, thank you for everything that you've done and continue to do for the University of Texas. What an historic impact they have had and continue to make on our community and our great university. Research, yes, through it, but also through innovations in care and cancer care delivery systems. Through both of those, the Livestrong Cancer Institutes will pioneer new approaches to our collective fight against this disease that touches every one of us, either directly or indirectly. Revolutionary advances will flow from this partnership. Lives will be saved, and lives will be made far better because of the Livestrong Foundation's generosity and their strategic vision. And now it's my pleasure to introduce a pioneering venture capitalist, a great citizen of this community, the founding and current chairman of the Livestrong Foundation, and a dear friend, Jeff Garvey. Good morning, everybody, and thank you, President Powers, for those kind words. For the past 17 years, it's been my 
privilege to help grow the Livestrong Foundation from an idea, nothing more than an idea about helping people with cancer, into a force for global progress against this deadly disease. Cancer is the world's uh, leading cause of death and its impact on our lives can be overwhelming. Looking back, Livestrong can celebrate serving nearly three million people uh, that are impacted by cancer at no cost to them. We can celebrate a mission that empowers patients to overcome not just the disease, but all the other things and the challenges uh, of living life with cancer, financial, practical, personal. And looking forward, it's time for the Livestrong Foundation to embrace an even bigger mission with a tremendous partner. I am absolutely thrilled to take that step today with Livestrong's $50 million grant to the University of Texas at Austin. With this grant together, we will launch the Livestrong Cancer Institutes of the Dell Medical School and build the next generation of truly patient-centered cancer care and support. As our new partners love to say, and it's a very good line, this idea will start here and it will go on to change the world. We're dreaming big because the problem is big. The need is large. This year alone, a million four uh, people in the United States will be diagnosed with cancer. 14 million people today uh, are cancer survivors. Among that group is Senator Kirk Watson, to whom we all owe thanks, who helped bring into reality a dream many of us shared, the first medical school at a tier one research institution to be built from the ground up in 50 years right here in Austin, Texas. Uh, and I also want to acknowledge Doug Ullman, the, our president and CEO, another courageous and three-time cancer survivor who came to me and the foundation board a couple of years ago and said, if there's going to be a new medical school being built right down the street from us, Live Strong must be part of it. Over the coming months, we will work with Clay and President Powers and Provost Fenvez as we create this new enterprise. I want to thank them, the development office here at UT, and the entire Board of Regents for their support. And I also want to acknowledge and thank two of my trusty board members who are in attendance here this morning, Lee Walker and Dennis Kavner, and an old friend of the foundation, Howard Chalmers, uh, for all of your help and incredible support to get this thing done in a timely manner. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge and thank the, the, the Livestrong community, uh, many of whom are, are here today, uh, a team of fighters and visionaries who have the heart and soul that is why our mission is so outstanding and sustaining. Today, with the launch of the Livestrong Cancer Institutes, we are committing to fighting stronger, living stronger, and reaching more people in need of our help. With that, I would like to introduce my very good friend, a friend of the Livestrong Foundation, a good friend of the University of Texas, and frankly, a good friend of the entire state of Texas, Senator Kirk Watson. Thank you all. Thank you all very much. And thank you, Jeff, President Powers, Doug, Dean Johnson, thanks for all you've done and are doing uh, on a daily basis. This is yet another great day to be in Austin, Texas. 
So many of you were here uh, not quite three years ago when I laid out the prospect of achieving 10 goals in 10 years that would lead to a healthier community. The vision was for Austin to become a center for comprehensive cancer care, to have a medical school at the University of Texas at Austin, as well as a modern teaching hospital, to provide better mental health care and a more sustainable and effective safety net through uniquely Austin Health Clinics. On that day, the sense of excitement and potential was extraordinary. And since that day, so many pieces of the puzzle have fallen into place because we have all come together as a community. The Regents took an historic vote to provide an essential funding source for the medical school. Central Health and Seton, Austin and Travis County's longtime public-private partners, have worked so hard, so passionately, and so intelligently to update and upgrade our community's health safety net. Seton has volunteered to build the community an almost $300 million 21st century teaching hospital that will also be our safety net hospital. And we will celebrate that groundbreaking and have another great day next week. And of course, we can't overlook the thoughtful people of Travis County who embraced and committed to the vision less than two years ago that made us all so proud to be a part of this community. And every time I drive by the work that's going on at the corner of Red River and 15th Streets, or we do something like open the area's first emergency department for those in mental health crisis, I thank those compassionate visionary voters, and we all should. We're having so many great days, and I savor each of them for what they mean to all of our community. Today, though, for me, I have to confess something. I admit that somehow this feels more personal. Jeff, I remember the first time you and I met all the way back in 1997, the first time you told me about a new foundation that was going to address cancer, address the needs of those with cancer, and address issues that were being unaddressed. I was only a couple of years removed from multiple surgeries and chemotherapy myself. I was grateful to be alive. I believed in my heart that I was going to be a survivor. I was a relatively new mayor, thankful for one of the gifts of surviving, a chance to serve. I was so appreciative that there was going to be a foundation that would be a resource for people, many of whom didn't have my access to early, effective, frequent, and personal health care so that they could survive in the same way I had, have their own new chances, go on and dream and see the outcomes of some of those dreams. I was deeply honored for the chance that you gave me to play a small role by serving on that initial board. The Live Strong Foundation has changed since that first board met. The foundation, now one of the world's premier cancer foundations, has, like the people it serves, known the joys of life and dreams fulfilled. It's also known the shock of getting bad news being disappointed, scared, and asking, what will the future be? Well, the future is today. The future will be the Live Strong Foundation shepherding Austin as it becomes a center for comprehensive cancer care. The future is the chance to team with a great new medical school at a world-class research university so that there will be personal human benefits realized by those who will fight cancer, those who will care for those fighting, those who will pray for survival, those who will know a better quality of life, even 
sadly, is they don't survive. And those who do survive that beast to live on, love, dream, and realize their own future new chances. We always knew the 10 goals in 10 years would require a new playbook. One of work between and with willing, innovative partners. A playbook that would draw strength from layers of relationships and synergies, even as they revolve around the catalytic, long anticipated medical school. The people of Travis County had faith that this would happen. And that faith is being rewarded remarkably quickly. As State Senator, I happily congratulate all of you and I congratulate the people of Travis County. As a cancer survivor, and on behalf of all those who will benefit from the Live Strong Cancer Institutes at the Dell Medical School, I say thank you. And thanks to the people of Travis County. We're now going to watch a short video. One of the people you'll enjoy seeing in it is with us here today. He's Iram Leon. As we watch this video, see these three wonderful people and think about what this great new partnership means. Let's appreciate that it's a great day to be in Austin, Texas, and the future will have even more great days. God bless all of you. I was having lunch with some coworkers. All of a sudden, I couldn't read the menu, and they told me that I had just had a, a seizure. Two weeks later, I would get the results that I had in brain cancer. I discovered that I had a lump again about five years after uh, my initial diagnosis. I was feeling really devastated about not being able to have a child. When I got my first diagnosis, I was scared. It was a black cloud. I didn't know who to trust. My original neurologist wanted me to stop running, so I wanted a neurologist that allowed me to keep marathon training instead of just all of a sudden having my life overruled by cancer. I saw my oncologist after we got the diagnosis, and she was like, let's do IVF. That's the first thing you're going to do. You're going to create some embryos, and then we're going to fight this cancer. She's like, you want to be a mom? This is a part of your treatment. But it certainly wouldn't have been on the table if she hadn't have offered it to me. You depend on this medical team to help you. I had an oncologist. I called him my quarterback and my radiation doctor. We also had a colon rectal surgeon. Those three doctors confided within each other. They all three were taking care of me. At the end of the day, the doctors are there to do their job, but I'm here to stay alive. It's a lot more than just dealing with the medical problems in my book. Patients need to feel comfortable talking to their doctor. I mean, they're humans. <laughs> you know, we kind of put them on a pedestal, but it's a partnership. So I, I'm Clay Johnston. I have the great honor of being the Dean of the Dell Medical School. Boy, I, Live Strong does these videos so well. I mean, they're just, uh, and they remind you of why, why we're here, why we're really doing this, the, and, and the wonderful things that we can, we can achieve in this, in this partnership. Um, did you all hear that there was a, um, a KUT um, uh, story yesterday about uh, celebration? And it talked about the importance of celebrating and how it sort of recalibrates our dopamine levels and remind, gets us through some of the... And, and as I was listening to that, I was thinking, you know, I'm really not much of a celebrator. I'm always thinking about the next thing that we've got to... But boy, uh, today the dopamine is flowing. <laughs> <laughs> It, and, and why? Well, for one thing, I, I think the gift is just tremendous. I mean, that, um, that uh, you all would uh, uh, have such confidence in us um, uh, to, to give us a gift of, of this size, um, uh, it's, uh, it, it says a lot. And obviously, we have a lot to do to deliver on the, on the promise in this partnership. But, I think even more I'm thankful for the partnership itself. 
Um, I really think the institutions are, can be soulmates. Um, you know, we both, you know, you said it nicely, Jeff, you have the, you know, you want to, your, your reach is global. You know, you, you have programs that are local, but your reach is global. It, same is true for us. We don't, we, we definitely want to focus on the problems of, of Austin and solve issues here in Austin, but those issues are national issues, and we want to create those models, not just national, international issues, create those models that, that can go well beyond. So I think we're, we're great partners that way. We also bring different strengths. Um, I mean, it's easy to be souls, soulmates with an organization that has so much soul, you know, to believe so strongly and has such a strong um, uh, uh, culture. Um, and also behind that, creativity, resourcefulness, um, and getting it done. I mean, it's really remarkable in the, in the history of, of that organization just how much they've gotten done. And on our side, we can bring, we hopefully will create some of that culture that'll wear off on us. I'm hoping we'll establish that quickly. But we also can bring in the intellectual firepower. We can be the conduit to, um, this is really not just in the Dell Medical School, this is about other uh, schools in UT that can also help uh, to come in um, address this question. Also, we we hopefully don't create a system in which philanthropy sits outside solving the problems of the healthcare industry when the healthcare industry is burning through all these dollars and not solving some fundamental issues for people. Um, and and we really should be um, uh, helping to to integrate those so that this is scalable because it's the right thing to do, not because we're fortunate enough to have people that recognize it and, and provide money to it through philanthropy. But really, what I think we're celebrating more than anything else is, is this expedition that we're launching together. Um, I mean, it's maybe not quite Lewis and Clark, but uh, <laughs> in partnership, we are, a, this is going to be a big adventure. Um, and there are lots of dangers, or lots, lots of obstacles as we go. Um, you know, we're, we're living in a healthcare system that values the number of procedures and the complexity of the procedures, but not taking, a, you know, the, the perspective of coordinating that care, not able to do that. Um, and too focused on the tumor and not focused enough on the person who just happens to have a tumor and the impact that that's having on their entire lives. And so we're gonna to have to navigate this together in this ex expedition, but what a great thing to celebrate, to be on this, uh, on this adventure together. So I, I again wanna thank the, um, the citizens of Travis County for, for uh, being able to be here. Um, I think uh, you know, we, we wouldn't be, that gives us a, an incredible uh, charge, a mandate that we fully accept that hey, Austin is, has needs and w looks to creative solutions to those needs and will be a great place in which to uh, launch uh, initiatives that have a uh, great impact. And I want to thank Kirk again for, um, for his role and in, in the, the school being here. So thank you so much for that hard work. Um, I also want to thank Livestrong and I mean it's, uh, pretty easy to thank you for all these great things. But again, most of all, for embarking on this partnership together to do something really different, much better than just building a building and putting in specialists, but really about taking a step back. How do we re-engineer, how do we create an ecosystem that, that creates the kind of care for people that we all want? So with that, I have the great pleasure of introducing uh, Doug Ullman, the president and CEO of the Livestrong Foundation. So, Doug. Thank you very much. Thank you, Clay. It's been an honor getting to know you, and I wanted to say on behalf of Central Texas, this community is so fortunate to have you leading this new healthcare enterprise, so thank you very much. <laughs> President Powers, we at the Livestrong Foundation are actually in the business of survivorship. And you, my friend, 
have epitomized that very concept. Thank you for your championing of this idea and for all of your leadership. <laughs> Senator Watson, your vision for what healthcare can be like for this community and for all of Central Texas is inspiring, it's admirable, and without you, none of us would be here today. So thank you very much. And to Jeff Garvey, your friendship, your mentorship, and your leadership over so many years has brought us to this day. And it cannot be overstated, the impact that you have had on people all around the world. Thank you, Jeff Garvey. And to our, to our entire team who are here today, to anyone who has worked tirelessly over so many years to make our mission possible, today, we, together, take the next step in this bold journey. Everyone in the Livestrong movement, everyone in the Livestrong Foundation has prided themselves on being innovative and creative and being champions for new ideas and new models to solve the pressing issues that face millions of people affected by cancer. And this idea, this collaboration, this partnership that we're announcing today is a transformative leap into the future of patient-centered cancer care. 18 years ago this month, my life was forever interrupted and forever changed. I stared blankly as a physician relayed that I had a rare type of cancer called chondrosarcoma. My parents stared stoically. My mom was devastated. Having lost her father to leukemia when she was 18, she was now witnessing her son's diagnosis at the age of 19. My dad just sat silently. The rest of that conversation was a complete blur, but I remember that day and that moment as if it were yesterday. And I remember the fear. I remember the denial. I remember the anger, the confusion, the uncertainty, and I remember feeling so naive. I remember wondering what the future would hold. And I remember having so many unanswered questions. After traveling far and wide for second, third, and fourth opinions, after calling organizations across the country seeking psychosocial support, after battling with insurance companies, and after setting a clinical plan, my family and I finally stumbled onto the right path. Millions of people around the world have that same experience each and every day, and we cannot allow their outcomes to be left to chance. We must create a new model that affords everyone access to high quality cancer care. Newly diagnosed individuals wonder if they are eligible for a clinical trial. They wonder if they'll be able to have kids post-treatment. They wonder what the financial impact of their disease will be. They wonder what their quality of life will be like during and after treatment. And in many cases, they find a hard time seeking someone else to speak with who's been down a similar path. For more than 17 years, we have worked with, listened to, and championed the voice of patients and survivors. And our connection with the cancer community is what drove us to this big idea. When we heard several years ago about the possibility of a new medical school, we knew we had a chance to elevate the voices of patients and survivors to a whole new level. We thought, let's imagine a future for patient-centered cancer care at this newly created institution that is not bound by history or encumbered by bureaucracy. Imagine a cancer program that is designed for patients and survivors by patients and survivors. Imagine a model of care that starts the second someone hears the words, you have cancer, and helps guide them through that entire navigation process, addressing the physical, the clinical, the psychosocial, and the practical challenges. Imagine an ecosystem that brings together a team, an oncologist, a primary care physician, a social worker, a psychologist, a navigator, all sharing information, 
all having a dialogue with the individual in order to make the best decisions possible for that human. Imagine a new model of care where technology is used to increase communication and to empower both the patient and the healthcare physician. Imagine a model of care that is available to anyone who needs it, no matter their socioeconomic status, the address of their home, the color of their skin, or their primary language. And imagine that revolutionary cancer care being pioneered here at the Dell Medical School and then exported to other cities and other countries around the world where far too many people struggle to gain access to high quality care. We are imagining all of that and more today. This is no longer just a dream. It is the reality of everyone in this room and everyone in the Livestrong community. We are reimagining the future of cancer care. This is a new day for the Livestrong Foundation, but more significantly, it's a new day for millions of people around the world who've been affected by this disease and for millions who unfortunately will be diagnosed in the future. As I look out in the crowd, I see the faces of many survivors. Ron, Ruth, Greg, Will, Helen, Iram, Chris, Kirk, and so many more. It is for those individuals and those who unfortunately are no longer with us that we must use our imagination and our creativity and the incredible resources of this community to chart a new course forward with patience front and center. This is the most significant investment we have ever made and it represents an investment in the future of patient-centered cancer care. Livestrong has always believed that working together, raising our collective voices, and building an engaged community can change the world. And the Livestrong Cancer Institutes will do just that. We're eager to partner with others whose vision is aligned and who want to ensure that everyone has access to the highest quality cancer care. Finally, I need to once again thank the entire Livestrong community. If you have ever contributed, if you have ever volunteered and stuffed envelopes, if you have ever answered the phone when someone who is newly diagnosed was calling and seeking support, if you have ever run with Team Livestrong, if you have participated in any possible way, the Livestrong Cancer Institutes is going to be built on your shoulders and on your back. You have enabled this day. And thus, you have positively impacted the lives of millions of people, most of whom you will never meet and most of whom you will never know their name. But their lives will be dramatically improved because of what we will do together. As we leave here today and as we celebrate what this will become, let us never forget that at this moment, friends of ours are sitting down for their next infusion or radiation treatment. Friends of ours are in East Austin at the Christopher House Hospice. Friends of ours are going to be diagnosed today and it is incumbent on all of us to ensure that they have access to patient-centered cancer care. As the son of a breast cancer survivor, as the son of a prostate cancer survivor, and as a cancer survivor myself, I want to thank everyone personally who has worked tirelessly for years and who will work tirelessly in the coming decades to make this dream a reality. Now, let's revisit the stories of Sarah, Gloria, and my good friend Aram, and let's commit to work together as a community to ensure that everyone affected by cancer has access to the highest quality patient-centered cancer care. Thank you. My neurologist said, I'd like you to do brain surgery within the next couple of weeks. And I said, well, I've got a marathon in five weeks. And he says, well, you should do that marathon and we'll do it a couple of weeks after that. And that's exactly the kind of doctor that I wanted, one that was more worried about keeping me living than just stopping me from dying.
we decided to go through IVF and my husband's sister Lisa offered to carry our embryos for us. And nine months later, Lily D was born. I love being a mom and having a family. I feel like I was the center of my medical team. They took really good care of me and I still go back and see the nurses. Every time I go see my oncologist, I just saw him about two weeks ago, he calls me his miracle. Patient-centered care is all-encompassing. It's not just what's going on with your cancer, it's how are you feeling spiritually, emotionally, mentally. It's about treating the whole person. Well, when we began, I said that we had two interrelated announcements. And of course, you've heard the first, the formation of the Livestrong Cancer Institute. And now the second. On October 17th, 2008, I stood before UT Austin's development board and made an ambitious proposal for a capital campaign. Now, just two years before that, the university had been given another precious gift, this one in the form of a report and a strategic exam, by more than 200 friends and citizens, known as the Commission of 125. So in 2008, when I proposed the capital campaign, I said the following, and I'd like to quote here. We already have a roadmap for the capital campaign. It's the report of the Commission of 125. I deeply believe in the vision of the Commission of 125. So in setting our goal for the campaign, we asked ourselves what it would actually cost to implement the recommendations of the Commission. And what part of that amount needed to come from philanthropy? And I went on to say, after we did the arithmetic, we discovered that the share we would need from philanthropy was three billion dollars. That's the cost of implementing the goals of the Commission and transforming the University of Texas in the process. That's the cost of recruiting the exceptional people and building excellence in our, in our strategic programs. If we can do this, we can become the great public university in the 21st century. That's what I said on that day. Today, we gave the ball to the Livestrong Foundation, and they got it across the goal line. Over the last eight years, we have now raised more than $3 billion. Thank you. We've met the goal of the Campaign for Texas. This is a thrilling moment for the university, for our community, and I hope for the state of Texas. During this campaign, nearly 26,000 individuals have given to UT Austin, including alumni and friends. More than 12,000 organizations have given to UT, including associations, corporations, and foundations like Livestrong and the Michael and Susan Dell Foundation. Today, I want to thank each and every person and each and every organization who voted with their checkbooks and with their faith to pursue the, vi the vision of excellence at UT Austin a vision of UT Austin as America's best. Let me just say from the bottom of my heart to each of you, thank you. So now we're over the goal line, but I might add we have 12 days left in the campaign. <laughs> So I encourage all Longhorns 
and their friends everywhere to join us in these final days and add your name to this truly historical effort. Thank you, and hook them horns. <laughs>